morning. I'm doing this to my head because classic. Oh, good morning. Um, I hope everyone is having an okay day. It's a terrible day actually. It's raining again. Classic. It's just rained the whole time that I've been home, which is fantastic, but it's fine. Um, so the half marathon was yesterday um and it actually went really well i really enjoyed the run itself i really enjoyed the route this time um they just added a couple more like um weaving parts i guess um which sort of broke up the run a lot better um i don't know why i've done it at this angle to be honest but that's what we're gonna have to do um yeah so it was a lot better run um i'd say that i felt the most comfortable running it but i didn't get the time that i wanted but the winds were like crazy um, and I think had I have started in a different pen, it might have been a bit different just because like the congestion of people in that, in the one that I was in was a lot. So I didn't break out until like the sixth mile really and get my like proper pace. Regardless, it was a good day, but I actually wanted to film because I was supposed to film when I was uh, <laughs> down and I have not done that, um, which is really good. Um, I wanted to sort of actually it would be quite interesting to sort of answer the most like sort of frequently asked questions in regards to like anorexia and like um, that specific eating disorder. And yeah, just like the questions that you find on like the websites or like people like commonly ask about it, I guess, um, which I thought might be quite interesting just to get, I guess, another perspective on it and my thoughts on it and actually make me think about things that I think or that I hadn't necessarily thought about um, as much as other other things. So I thought it might be quite interesting to do that. I wanted to do um, a workout because um, I feel good. I don't feel like I'm, I'm achy or anything. And just part of my morning routine, I guess. Um, like I said before, like I don't like I'm going to be showing stuff about all my content in regards to like the exercises that I do, because obviously my main goal really for this um, is to sort of about introducing exercise in back into people's lives um, in a safe and effective way. Um, and so for me, yes, obviously showing that content is important in terms of what I do in the gym, because I guess it gives that perspective on not having to, I guess, because <clears throat> I don't really, I get ideas from other people in terms of like specific exercises and stuff, which helps but like the way I train I just sort of train for me if I want to go lift weights I'll go lift weights if I want to do a HIIT workout I'll do that and it's just sort of the variety thing and that's sort of why I wanted to also film like doing other activities because I feel like everybody's opinion on exercise I guess we have a general um, opinion or relation to what it means um, and what kind of defines exercise I suppose but I think it's just showing I guess the variety out there and you don't have to conform to what you're being shown all the time like yes obviously it's it's good in a way but also like finding something that you really enjoy because it's a lifestyle change you want to find something that you enjoy and it's not just about the physical aspects it's about mental positivity and using it in a way that's mentally beneficial rather than it being physically um negative and too physically demanding and just associate it with a negative connotation or consequence as such. Yeah, and then I'll sit down and we'll do like the most common questions. I might look a little bit better. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with my face yet, but until then, I will see you soon. Well, I'll see you in five. No, an hour. I'll just see you in a minute. <laughs> Like a waterfall Thought the stars would never let you down And you keep on thinking you could save yourself But that's love, that's just love You should know some things will hurt Just how 
ask questions about what people want to know about anorexia and I guess the general idea um but I actually since like researching it a little bit I actually come across or came across rather um actually in terms of from our well I say our perspective but from people who have suffered from anorexia and what they actually it's called seven things people with anorexia want you to know and I think it's just important to sort of highlight what it is and actually what it it really is about because I feel like there's this massive perception on the physical aspect when you know it's, it's to do with a multiple of things so it just sort of brushes the surface in terms of what people know and I think until it's true in the sense of until you really experience it you don't get the full understanding of it um which obviously I'm not wishing anyone to go through it at all but it's like with anything like until you've gone through an experience it's really hard to sort of see that side of things um at least to to its full extent anyway but yeah so I thought I'd probably start with this first and then I can sort of get into that sort of side of things this was just going on about like so I'll read you the questions sorry not the questions but the statements um and I'll sort of just uh, elaborate on them a little bit which I thought um which might be quite a good idea I've ruined it already <laughs> um so yeah I mean immediately just starting like how many people it affects so in the UK alone it's well over a million people that are living with uh, anorexia um or an eating disorder and it's actually anorexia itself is has the highest mortality rate of any mental health illness which is huge and for it to be such a huge and the you know the primary cause of death for a mental illness and yet the mental side of it I guess isn't really seen as much um I definitely feel that the physical well it's a physical you can see the physical components happening with anorexia so like we said extreme weight loss um and things like that but really the psychological effect is just as important and that's one of the points in this in in this article saying about how it's just as like the psychological is just as important as the physical which is so true and sometimes in some circumstances if not more because I truly believe that the physical stability when getting to a healthy weight is hugely influenced by your mental state um, and that can be related to anything it's like when we deal the way we deal with stress you know our weight changes a lot with that so I think for it to be such a huge thing and not really that's not really highlighted enough I don't think and also the point of that it doesn't just affect women as much as it's the majority there's still I think it's about 10% um of men that suffer with anorexia and that as well is a, is undermined a lot and I think that's why we need to open that more so to every individual rather than just looking at um, the women's side of things and I remember actually just saying this now that there was someone brought up a really good point about how there was like sort of like when they make the booklets for specific illnesses and things like that that you see doctor surgeries and that and it was saying one of them like the signs and symptoms of when you're developing anorexia or you're extremely underweight is and it said about um losing your periods and obviously that doesn't apply to men obviously you have to make the point of it because it's hugely important but also it's just quite interesting how it is solely I mean quite 
the majority of information and stuff is is focused on the female um so that's another interesting factor that i believe obviously needs to come more into light because there's great complications that also come with men sorry there's also great complications that come with men so that's something to address so i believe the first point i have my laptop i'm so sorry so this is why i'm doing this so yeah so the first point was saying that anorexia isn't just about being thin and this sort of where it ties into the fact of the psychological aspects um and you know in what they do and how they measure your weight and things are so looking at bmi and things it's it's a combined there's there's like a combination of things that make up um anorexia and what it what it i guess represents um and it's interesting as well because i remember when i first was sort of well when my mum first took me to the doctors with concerns i really was it looked at as like a a cause for concern um because my bmi personally didn't or wasn't low enough to be i guess to be defined as anorexia or having a problem in terms of um developing my eating disorder um which is a huge problem when you look at it in the long run because again it's just looking at the physical aspect and what the numbers tell you the numbers indicate you're not you're not skinny enough so that's so there's nothing that we can do for you and that in itself is a huge triggering point especially for people with anorexia because you sort of see that as like a win in a way but also a bad thing too because you think yes so like I'm not getting this attention on me in terms of like getting help but it's bad in the fact that you see yourself now as bigger and that encourages you to lose weight so it's sort of like a lose-lose battle so with that as as the uh as my future was that i developed my eating disorder my anorexia and it wasn't really nipped in the bud it was again more looking at the physical aspects and that's such a huge huge problem or concern for mine because there was another i, I mentioned it before in a story about there was a program on i think it was i want to say channel four i can't remember now but it was looking at different mental health illnesses and it was saying how primarily they treat the physical aspect before the psychological and like i've said like to sustain a weight um, and maintain that throughout your life um or being more controlled in that sense that comes with the psychological if that's not treated then there is the next point that they um talk about which actually is super important and i think actually affects a lot of aspects in life and especially as you sort of do come into recovery um i know that i experience it and i think it's really affected how i how i am today is the fact of like um how it can take its toll on your social life like i'd never go out or i'd cancel plans or yeah i just didn't feel like i wanted to be in the presence of anyone and my mood was horrible or like i just wasn't myself and i didn't want to go and ruin that for anybody else when they were like going out or if i'd went out with my friends i'd go home early i'd be tired wasn't socializing not that necessarily you need to drink or anything, but I wasn't drinking because I was worried about the calories in alcohol. And all I was fixated on is that coming out of my routine and things. So I really struggled with that. And it's really hard to sort of put across your feelings. And I guess with that, you know, your friends, as much as they love you, they don't, obviously they, it's hard for them to understand what you're going through. So they see it as something completely different to what to what you see it as. And sometimes it's not even the case that it's a choice your your eating disorder kind of does that for you like you're not going out because of your eating disorder and that's and that's what it was um and that's what it can be and obviously unfortunately with that you know your friends have to <laughs> move on or you know they they you, they make start making memories and they can't you, you can't do that with them and you do miss out on a lot and you miss them developing moments and being there and that sort of thing and I know definitely for me, I think I lost a lot of confidence and forget how to socialise or don't have the social skills, get nervous when I meet people, try like, as I was saying, it's sort of like, it definitely has followed 
with me from my eating disorder and you know for me it's been about 10 years and I, I, I to be honest I wouldn't say that I've actually felt more like I'm at a very weird stage in life where I'm sort of finding the balance in what I do now and like I said training for myself now and training the way that I want to train rather than trying to overdo it or try and attain goals that are just not for me and not right for me or you know trying to get to something that I'm, I'm never going to be like I said like we're all made up so differently and so comparing yourself to other people to an extent is okay but also not fully investing yourself into trying to attain everything that somebody else has um because we're all built differently and genetically it's not possible <laughs> so um yeah so for me yeah until recent years I'm starting to sort of build up my confidence again and sort of kind of know how to talk to people and stuff it's just that I just have this I don't know I overthink a lot and I think anxiety and things like that comes into it but I feel like I am very much an independent person but I do feel like I get very nervous a lot more now um in social situations than I have ever done before uh and it's definitely something that I'm working on but I think it's just important to highlight that it that it does actually affect a lot more aspects of life than just not going to a single event or things like that um so it's really important that I guess that's highlighted too because if you're not seeing your friends as much you're isolating yourself those sort of things you know roll on without you realizing and it's just like anything in life with with you know it works like a a great example where people get stuck in their jobs and then time just goes and you're in there for about 10 20 years so um obviously if you love a job great but like just the sense of i think it's just where you don't realize how fast time passes and how much things can get instilled into your into your brain and to, to your habits of life so um a really important point the next point that they make is it's often about control and this sort of follows on from the previous saying that like I wasn't going out or doing things with my friends not because I didn't want to or my brain said I didn't want to but it was actually to do with my eating disorder and what things could potentially come up if suddenly they wanted to go out for a meal or if they wanted to eat or even just being too tired to even talk about stuff out of my routine it's not in place with what I was doing and that means there would be less time to focus on my anorexia um and I guess it's the point of like the control of things in the sense of what you were eating and how much you were eating and kind of comparing that to other people um and everyone's needs are so different and but the way your brain works is that that is your set amount and that is what you have you take control of what you eat therefore you can say how much you have and like a physical activity so look at how much you do and that is what you're going to do and not being able to break out of that as much as you think it's in your control it's so much out of your control that you can't change anything like as much as you know there is this very regiment scheme like I said I had a, I had a routine from waking up to closing my eyes in the evening and it was the same thing day in day out no spontaneousness at all was necessary was was accepted or <laughs> necessary um and you felt like you were in control because you were doing all of these things and getting them done but I was so out of control like so out of it wasn't me controlling what I was doing it was the eating disorder my life was fitting in my eating disorder it wasn't it was all about that there was nothing it, everything compensated for that relationships friendships my own self-happiness everything everything was compensated for that and all to get the things that my eating disorder wanted me to do um which is terrifying when you think about it in the aspects because it, it would be i could do well i would self-punishment was doing more of the bad things and a vicious vicious cycle and 
the next point where they lead into is to talking about like I've, I've spoken about this already about the psychological being just as important as a physical or just as important as a physical sorry and um there was a woman on here and she was saying how um about when she went into her hospital treatment and i have i made a video about my experience um in a previous video and it was quite interesting to to actually see that other people sort of have the same experience in the sense of looking at the physical aspects rather than the psychological they were saying as much as my um as much as they might have changed and their behaviors might have changed during their hospital stay coming out of treatment everything was pretty much the same afterwards in terms of like their psychological state and going back to their old habits and this is such a key point that really needs to be addressed when we're looking into treatment and what we're actually looking into and whether we're even looking into the right things because for me even like psychological aspects are touched upon I feel like the fact is what they focus on from the psycho psychological side of things may need to be sort of altered or changed I feel like it's not really diving into what is actually necessarily the key issues like for me I couldn't tell you a specific thing that made me develop an eating disorder it's definitely not a choice um definitely not a choice and you know there's a lot of research to set to look into the biological side of things and the genetic stuff um what actually causes the development for anorexia um but in the sense of what i mean by the psychological is that you don't always need to i think the problem is that we always try and find the cause and sometimes finding the cause is less effective than just trying to find things to make it better because like i said for me i can i can i still couldn't tell you to this day what sort of made me develop my eating disorder you know they say people who are more physically active are more likely to develop an eating disorder because of the um activity level that they do but it's so different every case is different and i feel like there are cases where you don't know what the answer is and there's no point in trying to find it for so long that you forget about healing you are so fixated on finding an answer that you may not even ever find and i think it's so important i guess to highlight that and to sort of look at the bigger picture and say right let's find a way to help in a different way um both phys physic oh, both physically and psychologically and yet the, the the main point is that yes you have to help the physical aspects because of things such as organ failure and the internal um damage that you're causing but like I said, if the mental's not fixed either, that's not going to be sustainable and that's not really going to be healing the process. Let me reiterate what I said earlier about the mortality rate. The biggest mental, the mental illness the high, with the highest mortality rate. So need I say more about that situation? Um, and uh, another important thing to say that they've said is that it's not a phase or a diet it's not a choice essentially it's not something that you just dive in and out of in the sense of oh i'm gonna have this like i'm gonna decide to have anorexia today um you may go through bouts of like relapse and things that's completely different but the fact of being like oh yeah i'm gonna choose to do this today or i'm gonna choose just not to eat today it's not the case <laughs> like it's something whereby if you like um for example I experienced it where where I was increasing my physical activity levels um, and restricting my eating I didn't actually find that I was as hungry as I used to be anymore and that sort of started to change and so where I wasn't hungry I didn't want to eat um, and that was sort of one of the components of, my, of mine and then when I ate something I, I just felt horrible and bloated and obviously that's your body's response to the damage that you've been putting it through and the stress you've been putting it through because it hasn't had food for so long and it's got to deal with that and and even not drinking water like I just wouldn't do it because I, I just didn't want to feel bloated or awful and you know when you look at the grand scheme of things now completely different outlet to that sort of thing but just sort of yeah it's not it's a diet is something that's you know you like I said you sort of dip it in and out of it's it's you try it and done well you sort of like okay well 
you know, go on to the next thing. It's not like that at all. And it's not a phase, this is, like I said, it's lasted me for 10 years. I didn't even finish that sentence, but it's not a phase. I, um, like I said, you can have relapses, like, and you can recover, but it's not the sense of like it being just a, oh, you know, it'll pass sort of thing. It sticks with you for a very long time, depending on when you catch it and things like that, you know, multiple factors will influence that. But I've had mine for, like I said, 10 years and only now I'm sort of starting to feel more like, or I feel like I'm getting my life back more than I have ever been, I guess, in a sense. But like, I think more so the fact that like, I I feel like I'm very well aware of the fact that I probably will live this, live with this for the rest of my life. But the amount that it controls my life is hugely and significantly different. And I'm not wanting, not that I ever wanted it before in the sense of, that's hard, I guess that's a hard point to explain, saying about the physical aspect of it, because before I, I mean, I still get it now, like body image difficulties, 100%, but it's not something that I want to attain in a negative way, if that makes sense. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, like looking back at old photos of how I used to look, I'd never want to go back to being that way. Um, and just knowing how I felt then too. Um, but it's something that I will always have with me. But the way I am now and the way that I want to live and my aspirations and my motivation to get better in my life, do better in my life is so much more now than it has ever been. So I think that's sort of the important thing to highlight here is that it's not something that you just decide to have one day and that's what you're going to do. It is something that just develops and unfortunately doesn't always end in the best way. Um, but the important thing is, is that you live your life happier more than 50% of the time or more so than being unhappy um, or you know just feeling better but it's so difficult to sort of say that I guess because I can I couldn't say that I was 100% happy I don't I don't know if anyone well some people might be 100% happy but like I think the importance is of I feel like just having more clarity in your mind um of things and just feeling a little bit more alive I guess which sort of comes to the, the next point as well in the terms of saying we're not anorexic so you have anorexia but you're not defined by what that is and that I, so I spoke about that previously again in the treatment video that I made um just feeling like everyone that's sort of what I was defined by and no one was listening to me or my views because I had a mental illness or um but I was still me and everyone sort of I felt like a lot of people lost sight of that and maybe I did for a while as well um but just in the sense of don't take everything that I'm saying as like that it doesn't mean anything and I think it's obviously a shared thought that people do just see you for your eating disorder and that's pretty much what you what what you are and they're the key points that people miss out on when we're trying to express how we feel um you just say well because you've got a mental illness you're wrong it sort of seems like and it's not the case and I think maybe that's where we miss a lot of stuff and maybe that's something that we need to look into when we look at the psychological treatment for this disorder because you could you could have the key you have the key to your, you have the key to your success you have the key to you getting better this is for you as much as people can influence it don't make it feel like others are tricking your own thoughts because I felt so undermined by when I had my eating disorder, not by everyone, but by, I guess, people that I thought would, I don't know, just sort of people that you thought wouldn't do that or like would know better, I guess. But it's such a difficult one, like I said, with the tr whole trust thing in this, in this, you know, there's a lot of deception that happens in terms of like 
hiding things and you know stuff like that when having anorexia and obviously that does dis displace people's trust but I think you can still think logically in situations like I was still like you know studying and stuff I'm still a person with some sort of intelligence <laughs> like I'm it doesn't always have to be about my illness and I think that's what I got so frustrated about at times where it was just all about my anorexia and people just forgot that I actually had things to say that weren't related or things that I did weren't related to my eating disorder I just wanted to do them it's like saying oh well I'm gonna go it's like I get it now so this is a this is a great example in terms of I guess how how much it follows and how much it sticks in people's minds it's like yeah so like I'd, I'd go for like um I'd be like oh, I just want to go for a walk or I'm gonna go for a run and you can just see people's minds ticking being like why is she going for a run is she is she all right like it's great to have people that love and care about you and support you and are concerned in that way but not everything has to be associated with the anorexia I totally get it but also I I feel like it can hold people back a lot and it I think it can put strain on relationships so I think developing that trust and when you feel like you have that development of trust with people you know there has to be an extent where they let go a little bit in that sense but you know it's it's a huge learning experience for everyone and we have to obviously give but you know give credit to those who are supporting us and trying to understand it as much as they can um but it can get lost sometimes <laughs> but yeah it, it, it's hard it's such a hard illness to deal with and like I said people deal with it in so many different ways so it's hard to sort of find that balance sometimes and the last one was saying that recovery is possible and it so is and like I said as much as like I feel like there is some there will always be an element that will live with me for the rest of my life I feel like I'm in such a better place in regards to my physical health um, and mental state in regards to my anorexia. Um, I We all have other challenges um, and other stresses uh, which are related to other things. Um, but if we're solely talking about my anorexia, I feel so much better than what I used to. And just to show that it is possible and you can still go ahead and do the things that you love like I said before in a different video is that I have always loved my sport and my exercise and for that to be taken away from me when I was going through my eating disorder was horrendous and I'm now back at a place where I can do it safely and I, I feel good about doing it and I feel like I can see improvements and I'm more about performance and just feeling like I can do stuff like run around and just like it's such I can't it's such an indescribable feeling that I think we all take for granted so much on a day-to-day -day basis and like just to be able to do them things and enjoy what I do and be good at them to some extent <laughs> is, is a great feeling and you know looking at that would have never been possible and I think it's important to just find what you love and this is a lifestyle change and this is why I feel it's so important to to see this side of things and using it using exercise in a positive way for mental well-being and you know helping those at the other end of the spectrum and getting them back into what they love it doesn't have to be exercise but to use it in an effective way and then you can go out and do whatever you love and I think that's so important especially in this day and age where everyone is so stressed and not necessarily in jobs that they want to be in or not doing things that they want to do and I think you have to have that moment for yourself just to be happy or just to feel like you're doing something that you want to do and that'll get you through life a little bit more so that's the situation it was a very long video I'm sorry I think all of my videos are going to be long but I hope you enjoyed it and I will get around to doing that other video in regards to the frequently asked questions it would actually be great if you could leave um, any questions that you have in the comments below and that would really actually add to that video and see what other um, what other areas we can sort of cover so that'd be really good um, but yeah I really hope you enjoyed if you have please give it a thumbs up because it really supports the cause and what we're trying to achieve and yeah I will see you in another video thank you for watching 
and have a lovely day. Bye.